In accounting, we often make decisions without going through the complete accounting cycle, without journalizing a transaction, without posting a transaction. We quickly use T accounts to analyze accounts and make a quick decision. Let's analyze some common accounts and look at what kind of information we can find from the T accounts. Let's look at the cash account first. You know that the cash account has a beginning balance that represents the balance of cash on hand at the beginning of the period. Cash receipts during the period would be debited to cash because cash is an asset. So cash receipts would be debited. Any payments we had in cash would be credited to the cash account. And then we would have an ending balance which represents how much cash we had at the end of the period. If we were evaluating the accounts receivable account, if you remember accounts receivable represents amounts that we are waiting to receive from our customers. We've already sold our product or service and we sold it on account which means on credit and now we're waiting to receive money from our customers. The beginning balance on this account reflects how much money we were expecting to receive from our customers at the beginning of the year, then increases to accounts receivable would be additional sales that we did on account. So additional sales that we did during the period that were on account would increase the amount of money that we're expecting to receive. Whenever customers pay us, we call those collections on account. That would reduce the amount of money that we're expecting to receive. And then the ending balance would be how much money do we expect are we waiting to receive from our customers at the end of the period. Similarly, when we look at accounts payable, accounts payable represents money we have borrowed to buy goods. So let's say we bought inventory. We have not paid for that inventory. Accounts payable represents money that we have, we owe to outsiders. So it's debt. The beginning balance of accounts payable reflect, reflect how much money we, pay, we owed our vendors at the beginning of the period. That normal balance is a credit balance, so that's why it's shown, the beginning balance is shown as a credit balance. Any purchases on account, so if we buy more things on credit, that increases our debt, that increases the accounts payable. When we pay our vendors, which we call payments on account, that reduces our debt. And that goes on the debit side for this particular account. And then the ending balance would be shown here, which re reflect how much we owe our vendors at the end of the period. Sometimes your accounting questions will give you different information about a particular account. So if they give you accounts payable, if they give you a beginning balance, how much we purchased on account, and our ending balance, we should be able to calculate how much payments were on account. Because you know that beginning balance plus purchases minus payments is equal to your ending balance. So we need to be able to analyze accounts just by looking at T accounts to come to a decision quickly. Finally, I want to tell you a little bit about what you may have heard as chart of accounts. A chart of accounts is simply a list of all the accounts that a company uses. This particular company has assets, liabilities, stockholders, equity, revenues, and expenses, and they have assigned numbers for each account so it's easier to ref reference it using their computerized system or their manual system. This particular company has cash, accounts receivable, office supplies, office furniture, and land. Other companies will have a different chart of accounts, and they would have a different numbering system, perhaps. But if you go work for a company and you hear the term chart of accounts, all it means is it's just a list of accounts with numbers related to each account, and it contains all the accounts that a company has.